In this lesson, we're going to multiply polynomials in several variables. This is all the same multiplication rules and steps that we've seen before. So let's start out with multiplying a couple of monomials together. Here I have 7x squared y times 5x to the third y to the second. Since this is multiplication, all I have to do is multiply the coefficients. 7 times 5 is 35. Then multiply the x's. x squared times x to the third means we add the exponents together, and that will be x to the fifth. Then y times y to the second is y to the third. Now let's multiply 6xy to the third times 10x to the fourth y squared. 6 times 10 is 60. x times x to the fourth is x to the fifth. And y to the third times y to the second would also be y to the fifth. Remember, multiplication does not require like terms. Addition does, but multiplication does not. Now let's multiply a monomial times a polynomial. This is going to feel like the distributive property. And here are a couple of examples for us to work on. So we're simply distributing 3x squared y to these three terms. So we'll work on the first one. 3 times 4 is 12. x squared times x to the third is x to the fifth. And y times y squared is y to the third. Now we'll multiply 3x squared y times our middle term. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. x squared times x squared is going to be x to the fourth y times y is going to be y squared. Now we'll do 3x squared y times 2. 3 times 2 is 6 times x squared times y. Now let's look at the second one. 6 times 10 will be 60. x times x to the fourth will be x to the fifth. y squared times y to the fifth will be y to the seventh. Now we'll multiply 6xy squared times our middle term. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. x times x squared is x to the third. y squared times y is y to the third. Now 6 times 3 is 18 times x times y squared. Now we'll look at multiplying polynomials together. So two terms times two terms. You want to watch for two terms times two terms problems where you can use the FOIL method or the sum and difference of two terms or the squared binomial shortcuts that we learned. So here are a couple of examples. I have x plus 4y times 3x minus 5y. Now this does not look like either our sum and difference of two terms or our squared binomial problems, so I'll just use the straight FOIL method on it. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 5y is minus 5xy. 4y times 3x is plus 12xy. And 4y times negative 5y is minus 20y squared. Notice that our two middle terms can be combined. So we'll have 3x squared plus 7xy minus 20y squared. Now we look at 5x plus 3y squared. This is a squared binomial. So the shortcut we had was multiply the first term times itself. 5x times 5x will be 25x squared. For the middle term, we multiply the first term times the second term and then multiply that by 2. 5x times 3y will be 15xy. 15xy times 2 is 30xy. And then last times last would be 3y times 3y. That is 9y to the second. If you forget how to get this middle term, you can always just write down 5x plus 3y times 5x plus 3y and use the straight FOIL method. might take you just a little longer. Next, let's multiply a couple of other examples together. So 
So if you look at the first one, it seems to be a sum and difference of the same two terms. That means when we use the FOIL method, we can skip the O plus I step because it's going to add up to zero. So first times first is going to be uh, 4x squared y times 4x squared y, which is going to be 16x to the fourth y squared. O plus I adds up to zero. Then last times last is going to make negative 9y squared. For part B, we can't use the FOIL method or any of our shortcuts because this is not two terms times two terms. So we really just have to go with the straight uh, distribution method here. So let's distribute the x, then we'll distribute the y. x times x squared will be x to the third. x times negative xy will be negative x squared y. And x times y squared will be plus xy squared. Now let's distribute the y. y times x squared, you could write as y times x squared, but let's keep our variables in the same order every time. Since the order of the variables really doesn't matter, we'll tend to keep up with them better if we keep the letters in the same order every time. So instead of writing y x squared, I'm going to write x squared y. Then y times negative xy will be minus xy squared and y times y to the second is y to the third. Now let's combine our like terms. I have an x squared term here, and let's see what we can combine with negative x squared y. I also have this positive x squared y, so negative one plus one makes zero, and I don't need to write down anything for that. Now, xy squared and negative xy squared also add up to zero. And so I've lost all four of these middle terms, and the only other term we have is this y to the third. So we kept that. So isn't it interesting how you can multiply this giant problem together, and then all of these terms boil down to just this very simple answer? Let's look at this part C. 2x minus 5y squared. So we can use our squaring shortcut here. We'll say 2x times 2x is 4x squared. For the middle term, we'll do 2x times negative 5y times 2. So 2x times negative 5y would be negative 10xy, and negative 10xy times 2 would be negative 20xy. And then for the last term, we'll say negative 5y times negative 5y would make positive 25y squared. Now on part D, this doesn't fit any of our shortcut methods, so we'll just use the FOIL method on it. 7xy times 2xy will be 14x squared y squared. 7xy times 3 will be minus 21xy. 1 times 2xy will be plus 2xy. And last times last will make minus 3. Now I do have like terms to combine in the middle here. So negative 21 plus 2 will be negative 19. So our final answer is 14x squared y squared minus 19xy minus 3.